Congressman Jason Smith joins me now. Mr. Chairman, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for being here. It's great to be here, Maria. So uh, increase, incredibly, you've got 32 people now saying they won't support this bill, despite the best efforts by you and, of course, Speaker Kevin McCarthy uh, being able to wrangle Joe Biden into agreeing to, to cut spending. Uh, I want to get your take on some of the criticisms out there. Earlier, I spoke with the uh, chairman of the uh, Freedom Caucus, Scott Perry, and here's what he told me. Watch. A lot of people have said Democrats have gotten enough Thing in the deal. Well, I'll tell you what they got in the deal. They, I give you. They got four trillion reasons to vote for this because in the end of at the end of this next uh, two years, there's going to be thirty six trillion dollars in sovereign debt for the United States of America. Quite honestly, I have read the bill, so it's not going to be trillions of dollars in savings. It, it, it actually might be just a few billions of dollars in savings. The vote is the vote was moved through rules last night. And I think that Democrats and Republicans that are all going to fleece the American people and spend all their tax money are going to get plenty out of this thing, for at least $4 trillion. And they're all going to vote for it. And they're going to come home and tell everybody, well, we did the best we could. Congressman, do you think you have the votes to get this thing passed? Maria, we absolutely have the votes. Um, the clip that you just played, I, I respect my colleague, Mr. Perry, but I will have to disagree. Um, I've read the 99-page bill, too, and there is nowhere, Maria, in that bill that talks about increasing the debt limit $4 trillion. What it does do is it sets the date of when the debt limit will expire, which will be January of 2025. The only way that you add $4 trillion worth of debt is if Congress approves it, if Congress approves the spending. So that is where the real fights are in the appropriations process, and that is what's next, the next step of the game. That's a great point that you make. Uh, the other point that Perry made was that these so-called caps on spending for the next six years are actually not caps, but just targets, and there's no real push or uh, you know, requirement to actually keep spending capped. You know, he's part right there. The first two years truly are caps that are enforced by sequestration. The following four years after that, it's under the Budget Control Act of 1974 with very weak enforcement. But what I will say, Maria, is, is for the last two years, we've had zero caps in, in, in Washington, D.C. And what did we get? We had $10 trillion of increased spending under one-party Democrat rule that's led to the highest inflation in a generation. These will be the first caps that we've seen. And what's more important is, is the spending next year will actually be less than what it currently is this year. That's never happened yeah. since I've been in Congress. And that's a step in the right direction. Of course, you want everything when you're at a negotiating stage asking for it. But guess what? Sometimes you just have to meet in the middle. That's what we did here. And this package is so much better than a blank check debt limit, which which President Biden and Chuck Schumer were demanding. Absolutely. The Congressional Budget Office says that the debt ceiling bill will cut the deficit by $1.5 trillion over the next decade. But here, too, people wanted more. And what about the IRS? What is this going to look like when Joe Biden gets that $80 billion or now, what are we at, $78 billion uh, after this bill? He's still going to hire the 87,000 IRS agents to audit American families, right? You know, we're, we're taking bites out of the apple. We eliminated the $1.4 billion, which is the hiring of new IRS agents for this year. We're also um, looking at um, making sure that future years we can also cut um, the IRS funding. These are just steps in the right direction. It's not an all or or nothing type approach, but we're at least getting something in regards to pushing back on this administration's overreach on working class Americans. How, how tough was it negotiating with President Biden? Uh, Kevin McCarthy did a stellar job. We saw him in action. I know that there was common ground on clawing back the $21.4 billion in funding uh, allocated to the IRS, but through the Democrats Inflation Reduction Act, but there was also pushback uh, on the COVID related funding, right? That was one common ground that we saw with the COVID relief uh, clawback. 
Maria, Speaker McCarthy did an outstanding job. Uh, think about this. In my time in Congress, I've only served two years where Republicans controlled the White House, where they controlled the House, and they controlled the Senate. And in that two-year window, we were not able to get these kind of conservative wins. Would we have liked to gone farther? Absolutely. But these items are going to become law. This will be the first substantial reforms to TANF work requirements in over two decades. This will be the largest, the, the biggest impact in permitting and NEPA reform in four decades. When I was uh, when I was presenting yesterday before the Rules Committee, I heard the Democrats say their most concerned provisions of this bill, in fact, is the permitting reform. The permitting reform will actually grow our grow our jobs, affect our economy in more ways than we can analyze. Yeah. Tell me about that, because that's another area where, you know, you had a growth plan. There is no growth plan for this economy in this administration. Does permitting get you to growth? Permitting will absolutely get us to growth. It's going to speed up the time frame in doing highway projects, doing pipelines, looking at energy. Our country has an energy crisis and, and a trans, transportation issues from that matter, and this is going to help address those items. It's a, it's, a, it's a good win, and whenever you get a win, take it and go to the bank. So, so tell me about the appropriations process, Congressman. You said that's the next step step here in terms of stopping the reckless spending. What are you going to do? What's the priority? You know, what Speaker McCarthy wants is for us to go through all 12 appropriations bills before September 30th. But guess what? Under this bill, if we don't go through all 12 individual appropriations bills where they are sent to the president, th there comes an amendment we call the Massey Amendment. And it puts a continuing resolution as of January next year with a 1% 1 per 1 reduction of all items on the budget until all 12 appropriations bills are passed and government is functioning correctly. Mm, okay. Congressman, we're going to be watching all of that. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you, Maria. Have all a great right. day. And to you, Jason Smith. Quick break.